right. So, <laughs> again, welcome everyone to Learning Opportunities for Service Here and Beyond. I'm Calvin Landrum. And I'm Khadija Khan. And we are coming to you live from AmeriCorps VISTA headquarters in Washington, D.C. Uh, we're assisted by Indy and Scott, uh, our, pro our production partners at Education Northwest. You're going to see them in the Q and A, uh, and probably in the chat, and they'll assist you with any like uh, uh, technical issues. <laughs> Alexandra says, "So what are we doing now? Uh, we're about to talk about learning opportunities for your service here and beyond. Thanks for joining us, Alexandra." <laughs> uh, Thank you to all of you who have been posting to the chat question about the goal you hope to accomplish during your year of service. It's great to see such positive and professional goals and also recognize that you're commenting on ways that you want to grow as well as fulfill the duties of your VISTA assignment. Totally. Uh, and I see a couple people in here uh, have, have, have posted their goals. Kristen says one of her goals is to bring humanity into the discussion of food insecurity, uh, which I, I like that. I think that's a really good way, you know, you say here, uh, seeing the people like behind food insecurity numbers uh, and putting like a face to, you know, inequity uh, as it relates to food is very important. Uh, Janika says one of my goals uh, is to focus on capacity building. I want to strengthen my community, my program, and the youth. Janika, that is, uh, that could be a tagline for the VISTA program. I mean, that's exactly what we're all doing here in this program, uh, and that's great. And then Pamela says simple. I want to learn more. I want to learn more than I came with. This is more than volunteer service to help me accomplish the, my, the plans made by the community, uh, and that's really a key of the Vista program is working with the community, not um, not like at the community, you know. Uh, so that's a really great mind frame, Emma. Yeah, some really awesome responses there. You may have joined Vista to become involved in anti-poverty causes, or maybe to learn about a nonprofit or nonprofit management at large. Perhaps you saw an opportunity to become a better public speaker or to help a specific community that is meaningful to you. Totally. Uh, so this session is really going to uh, show you how to make the most out of your year of service so that, you know, while you're building that capacity in the community, as someone mentioned in the chat, you're also building that capacity within yourself. Uh, the VISTA program offers a wide range of resources to support you in your professional development, so we want to let you know exactly what's available, how to connect to those resources. So in this session, we're going to identify uh, ways that you can build your skills to help you in your service and point you to resources to make that happen. Uh, during your orientation, uh, you learned some of the basics about your VISTA assignment description or your VAD. Uh, and you may have even begun you know, identifying skills that you'll need to accomplish your VAD. Now we're going to try to uh, you know, talk about today um, ways to develop those skills to ensure your success. So, Here's our agenda for today. Alexandra, what we're doing now, this is our agenda uh, for today. We're going to start by looking at the individual development plan as a tool for your ongoing learning. Then we'll explore four areas relevant to VISTA service. Uh, we'll show you a range of useful resources on the VISTA campus and lots of other sites. Uh, and then we'll see what questions you have. Now, throughout today's presentation, we'll have opportunities for you to participate. Uh, if this works for everyone, I'll ask Khadija to start us off. Awesome. Thanks so much, Calvin. So this webinar is really focused on the professional development of VISTA members. And all of you recently com completed your VISTA orientation, which introduced you to the VISTA program, all of its benefits, and to com concepts of poverty and theories of change. You've also been engaged in learning the specifics of your VISTA role and the site where you're serving. And this has been done through on-site orientation and training. As these formal trainings wind down, you'll need to think about what comes next. Even when you've finished on-site training, you're still learning as a VISTA, um, and that, that role continues as you progress. Totally. Learning as a VISTA is never over. Uh, so first, let's revisit one of your most important tools. Your responsibilities as a VISTA are outlined in the VISTA assignment description, or your VAD. Uh, when you began your service, you had a chance to review your VAD and think about what it's going to take to accomplish it. Now, in thinking about the tasks that lay ahead, you may have started identifying some of the skills that you need to succeed. Um, so we're going to start uh, initially with a question. Uh, and, and the question is, what skills do you need to accomplish your VAD? So take a moment uh, and think about that. Post in the chat what your responses are. Uh, and we'll give you, uh, you know, a second to really think about this. Think about what skills do you need to accomplish your VAD? Uh, use the chat feature. Um, again, 
click on chat. If you don't see the chat panel, uh, it's on the right side. Uh, and just send your uh, responses to all participants. So again, like your skills that you need to accomplish your bad could be uh, fundraising, could be volunteer recruitment, could be community engagement. Uh, Event yeah. management, Event management. Mm -hmm. uh, or there's just like things that you've never done before. For example, like maybe you need, um, I don't know, like you need like specific skills in like computer programs, like you need to know about Excel, you need to know about like Tableau, these like really random like uh, computer programs. Let's see what folks are saying. I'm seeing some networking skills, uh -huh. grant writing, perhaps some communication and fundraising, cultivating key relationships and event planning. Public speaking and community outreach, totally. So it sounds like you're going to be like working with the public out in the community. Uh, let's see, we've got strong writing skills, presentation, public speaking, time management. Alexis, that sounds, I mean, that, I mean I'm trying to think of like what job you might have, something like recruitment maybe, maybe you're a recruiter, uh, maybe you're a like partnership development person. Uh, sounds like you're very heavy on uh, communication skills that you might yeah. need. I'm seeing a ton of public speaking on there. Same. And a lot of grant writing, which yeah. uh, is really cool because uh, we discussed it later on, uh, but we actually offer, VISTA offers a course in grant writing where you can receive college credit recommendations for taking this course uh, on grant writing. Yeah. Uh, and then interpersonal skills. I love interpersonal skills. They're my, oh, yeah. they're my favorite skills to develop because I love to talk, love communication, love <laughs> chatting. Uh, I'm a very handsy talker. And unfortunately, you all on the phone can't see me, but my hands are flying all over the place. Um, <laughs> so, so, so thank you all so much uh, for for sharing. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna keep it moving and go on. Uh, and you know, while we have this wide range of skills that people will be uh, using in their uh, coming year, we're gonna talk about the Vista Science description. So we're gonna talk about the VAD, the VAD. Yeah. Um, the VISTA assignment description uh, forms the foundation of your work plan, so you want to explore that very thoroughly. So with your supervisor to review your VAD and develop measurable milestones and deliverables. So, uh, you know, as you're going through, take notes and write down any areas uh, that you feel that you need clarification on so that you fully, fully understand your assignment. You know, if you get to a task and you read it and you're like, uh, I think this means this, but it could also mean this, that is an excellent t time to sit down with your supervisor and say, hey, let's talk this through and what does this actually mean in the context of our program. Uh, always keep your VAD handy so you can refer back to it periodically and, uh, and track your progress. Uh, tracking your progress is not only good for you, you know, while you're in service and while you're uh, trying to accomplish all your goals, but it's great for you after service because when you're building that resume, when you're starting to think about life after VISTA, um, having a place where you have kept track of all your accomplishments and all your goals is going to come into handy. You will thank yourself later when you're trying to write a resume for a job and you're like, how many volunteers did I recruit? How many events did I do? Who did I speak to? How much money did I raise? All those things. So keep track of all that and your VAT is a really great place to do that and to focus uh, your tracking of your, of your things. Now, as you get further into service, you and your VISTA supervisor may come up with additional activities to really capitalize on your unique strengths. So your VAD may evolve a little bit, you know. If you, if you find that you're really good at one thing and, uh, and, and that's sort of like where you're shining, your VAD may shift a bit just to accommodate that and let you be great, you know, and let you do the things that you're good at. Um, and your supervisor, again, is always a person to ask questions uh, that are related to the VAD, its time frame, and some, you know, and any other aspects of your assignment. Yeah, and as you serve, you'll definitely have opportunities to develop or sharpen knowledge and skills that you'll carry out with your VAD more effectively. And so one way to help you plan for what skills or knowledge you'll need to develop is by creating an individual development plan or an IDP. An individual development plan is a great tool for capturing the skills you'll need and identifying specific learning activities that you can undertake to develop the skills that you need. There are lots of different ways that you can organize your individual development plan. We have a really simple template available for download from the VISTA campus. The link is going to be posted in the chat panel shortly for you to follow up. Perfect, it's already there. Thanks so much, Andy. We also gave a quick example on the screen of how to fill it out. If grant writing is something that you might be wanting to do, then maybe you want to first think about how much you already know about grant writing. Uh, say you know a little bit about grant writing, but would like to develop more skills in that area. 
you might want to list the skills um, as a medium priority. From where I would identify opportunities for developing that skill. For this example, I may want to apply to take the VISTA online course on resource development, fundraising, and grant writing. Think of your individual development plan as the bridge between your FAD and actually accomplishing your goals. You may know where you want to end up, but the individual development plan allows you to not only plot your path, but also have concrete action steps to get there. And in this session, we'll mention a lot of different resources that may be helpful to you to gain uh, important skills to make sure that you're watching out for the relevant topics. Totally, and I'd like to mention, you know, IDPs don't have to be a formal document. They can be, you know, a little more informal where you're, where you're just brainstorming things that you want to learn about and know. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be like a big intimidating formal process. It really can just be you sitting down, go to the coffee shop, grab a cup of coffee and a piece of paper and a pen and just start writing things down. It's like, these are all the things that I want to learn. Uh, and, and you can categorize, like, these are things I want to learn, you know, about my job and how to do that better. These are things I want to learn to make myself a better person. These are things I want to learn to make myself a better communicator. And then, you know, it's, it's really about going out and finding the resources that are going to help you accomplish those goals and just being very intentional about that. So we're going to walk through um, four main areas of learning that really have seemed most useful for most VISTAs. Um, <laughs> for each, we're going to show you a resource on the VISTA campus and some resources on other sites to guide your learning in this area. Now, we're going to look at ways uh, also for you to connect with other VISTAs on these subjects. All right, so before we get into that, I do have to share the legal fine print. We're going to show you a number of websites and resources that may be helpful. But just because we mention them doesn't necessarily mean that they're endorsed by the VISTA program or the Corporation for National and Community Service. So you'll want, to want, you'll want to figure out which resources are right for you. And to help you follow along with the presentation and avoid having to write down all of those resources that we mentioned, there is a handout that you can download that lists the resources that we will refer to. Totally, yeah. We're going to be talking about a lot of things here. Uh, Indy will post the link to that uh, in just a minute uh, when she has a moment. Uh, she'll post that uh, to the chat, so you'll have all the resources that we mentioned today. Now, you've been at this stuff for just a few weeks, right? Like most of you, uh, if you could go ahead and put in the chat, like how long have you been uh, in service? How long have you been at VISTA? So while we're waiting for those to roll in, uh, I'll keep going. Um, but it's likely it's just been a few weeks, uh, but you need to know the ins and outs of your VISTA service. You know, you learned a lot of that before you started service, but there's so, so, so much to know. Uh, so it says March 19th, month and a half. Three weeks. Three weeks, six weeks. Oh, nine months, Adrian. What? <laughs> Adrian, you were supposed to attend this uh, uh, eight months ago. Uh, we got a lot of uh, March 19, six weeks, six, okay, cool. So everyone, most people are, are, are around the same place. Uh, 44 days, Cody is counting to the day. Uh, <laughs> awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, so uh, this is cool, it's good to know. Um, so if you, Know the answer to this question that I'm about to ask. Go ahead and put it in the chat. Uh, let's see, how do you reapply for another year of service? And actually, you don't even have to answer the question. If you know it, put yes. Yes, I know the answer to that question. Uh, how do you reapply for another year of service? Do you know? Uh, 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 does anyone know? Yes, okay, everyone knows, Lonzo knows. Alex, Alexa, or sorry, Alexis, no, she doesn't know. He, they don't know, sorry. Pamela, ask your leader supervisor. Excellent answer. Um, so it looks like we've got a mixed bag here. Some people know the answer, some people don't know the answer. For those of you who don't know the answer, you're going to want to look at the VISTA member handbook. Sorry I'm like trolling you uh, without giving you the answers and just like saying go look at the handbook. Uh, but I would go look at the handbook. Uh, that's going to be the place, you know, that has, all, that has the answers to all these like policy questions and things. And I guess I can give you the answer. To reapply, the short answer is when you're at the end of your service, you make a selection in your future plan form that says I would like to apply for another year or I would like to be done with this year, but there's more details in the VISTA member handbook. So go read that handbook. Uh, it details the policies of the VISTA program, outlines the process for requesting assistance, has answers to questions like how many personal days you get and what do you do if you want to take a college class and where to get support if you have a family emergency and so, so, so many things. 
Uh, the handbook is located on the VISTA campus in the section called Life as a VISTA. Andrea Moore, yes, I know the answer. Good girl. All right, so next you can get to know the organization where you're serving. Dive into some of those documents that, that lay the foundation for your organization, including their strategic plan, the mission, and the vision of the organization. If there have been VISTAs at your site previously, review their accomplishments through past quarterly reports, which your supervisor can probably share with you. Meet with people in various departments. Make sure that you're learning about their roles and how you might work together. These people are also likely to have connections in the community that could be very, very helpful to your VISTA assignment. Totally. Um, so, uh, so we're going to be talking to you a lot during this presentation, uh, and we have a question, a poll question. Uh, uh, so on the right-hand side, a poll is going to pop up. That's uh, uh oh, that's the wrong poll. Uh, that's okay. We'll get to that one later. Um, there we go. There's our poll question. So our question is: How many? How frequently do you formally meet with your supervisor? So we take a second, we've, we'll, we'll have this up for a moment um, while you're answering. If you can't see the poll question uh, at the top, you can click on the word polling, or if you're on a mobile device, you probably won't see it. I'm not sure if this is, I don't think this feature is available on mobile devices. Um, but we'll take a second. Uh, Khadija, how many times do you formally meet with your supervisor? Um, I meet with them at least once a week. At least once a week? Yep. Oh, that's a nice, that's a good amount of time. I think that's like a, a really great, perfect amount of time, actually. Uh, I'd say I probably meet, uh, we have a lot of meetings, you know, with my supervisor. Only occasionally are they focused on me and, gotcha. my, you know, and, and myself. Gotcha. So we're talking a lot, we're in a lot of constant communication, but that works for our relationship. Uh, he's right across the hall from me, so I'm able to go uh, chat with him if I need to at any time. Yeah. Uh, so, like, a formal, like, meeting time doesn't, doesn't work. Well, it would work for us, but we don't need that, you know? We're, yeah. we're, we're able to get that time in on other ways. Let's so, see where everybody fell. Oh, nice. So we've got multiple times a week with seven folks. Uh, once a week, 19 of you, that's our most popular answer. And then 33 of you not answering, 33 of you if you're on the phone, answer our poll question. Um, <laughs> but this is good to know. So, so as you think, most people, it looks like are meeting once a week. Uh, you know, schedules are very busy, and it can be really challenging to sit down and have an actual meeting. Um, however, one of the biggest contributors to this member success uh, personally and professionally, is a good supervisor uh, and good member-supervisor relationship. We want you to have the support that you need so you can continue to grow and learn and also want to ensure that your supervisor and sponsoring organization know about your challenges and know about your accomplishments. Like, we, you know, everyone should be informed of what's going on with your business service. Um, and so while we're talking about supervisors, let's kind of chat for a second about what to do when maybe your needs uh, aren't being met by your supervisor. So there may be times when a situation, uh, where you, or a, when a situation with a supervisor is maybe too challenging for you to manage on your own. Uh, for example, if you feel your supervisor is treating you unfairly or harassing you, uh, if your supervisor is unavailable and you don't know when you'll see them again, or if you have just so many supervisors uh, that you can't any get that you can't get any decisions made, uh, that you don't know who to turn to, you know. Um, like, you know, for, with questions and things like that. Uh, these are all uh, issues, you know, that are preventing you from having a successful VISTA experience. Uh, and there are some resources that you can turn to. So if your project has a VISTA leader, you can approach your leader uh, for general advice, problem solving, and assistance in facilitating difficult conversations. Uh, they can be an excellent resource to you, um, you know, to help, uh, uh, what's the word, mediate uh, those discussions. Your CNCS state office can also uh, approach you, your CNCS state office can assist you with any issues uh, you might have relating to how your project is being managed, uh, maybe its ability to attain its goals, or any issue that cannot be solved by your supervisor. They can also intervene if you're not receiving supervision, uh, if the things you're being asked to do are very different from what's in your bed, or if your tasks like are capacity building. Uh, uh, that's a big one. Uh, or if you're replacing a staff member, they can help you with all these things. Your state office can. Uh, you can also turn to other VISTAs, <laughs> either at your project or, or across the country, uh, for advice and support. 
the VISTA campus has a variety of discussion boards where you can post questions and ask your colleagues for input. Uh, just a reminder that the forums are public, so use good judgment when discussing your situation. You know, you don't need to call out with names, uh, but if you're looking for advice, uh, that's a great place to go. We also have a webinar uh, that digs deep into supervisor issues and how to manage them. Uh, it's called Managing Up, Navigating the this is a supervisor relationship. Uh, you'll probably hear my voice on that because that's, that's, that's one of my webinars that I make. Uh, and an on-demand version is available on the webinars page of the VISTA campus. Okay, so I've added two more life hacks here. Regular meetings with your supervisor and getting additional support when you need it. Um, at this time, we're going to take some more time to hear from you again. Now that you've been on your project for a couple of weeks, uh, has anything popped up that makes you really nervous about your VAD? Maybe you're worried about being asked to do something that's beyond, beyond your current skill set, or maybe the tasks outlined seem like they're too big. On the flip side of that, we also want to know, what are you really excited for about your VAD? Is there anything specific that you're working on or gearing up to do that you're particularly passionate about? Uh, just tell us those things in the chat, and let's let's go through some of those responses. All right, let's see. Working with the national park system. I see. I love the national park system. It's one of my favorite things. When I was an AmeriCorps member, I did a lot of work in the national park system, and it was excellent. Awesome. Excited about hosting workshops for the community. I'm all about a good workshop. Kelia, Kelia Thompson, the time is being overwhelmed with the workload and doing it in a timely fashion. I think uh, that is a common concern amongst everyone. I know I felt that way, I'm sure Khadija felt that way, of just I have so much to do and I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it all. Uh, and I know that that kind of can be um, magnified as a VISTA member because you have a set amount of time to do your goals. Like, a, you know, if it's a really big project with a really large vision, you have one year. Uh, and I know that that can be overwhelming. Uh, okay. I'm seeing a lot of people are not nervous at all. Not nervous yet about anything. Yeah. Super excited to plan events and focus on building relationships. Uh, excited about working on diversity and inclusion policy. That's a really fun one. Uh, that's something that I've worked on for VISTA a few times, and it's, it's, uh, it's interesting. It's, it's tricky. It's fun. Not having the freedom to work on my VAD as a concern. Interesting. I'd like to, I, I would love to hear more about that. Uh, not having the freedom to work on your VAD, uh, because your VAD should be your main focus of your project. So if you're finding that your time is being spent doing things that aren't your VAD, which is what you signed up to do, uh, that it's, I, I don't, I'm not going to say that's an issue, but that's something that I think we that they should reach out to your state office about uh, and ask them to intervene and maybe mediate a discussion to say, hey, I signed up for this and I'm not able to, I haven't been able to do this yet, mm -hmm. or I'm not even working towards this goal yet. Uh, can we kind of get me back on this track? It's a very fair discussion to have and one that you should feel empowered to, to, to take on. Mm -hmm. Uh, gain volunteers orientation. Oh, this is cool. So I'm, so I'm happy that everyone uh, is so so excited uh, with their with their with their projects. Um, many people identified um, like you know kind of specific like tasks that they need to do, uh, and it's likely that they're like most people look like they're going to have them do, doing new things. That's kind of, I think that's where that excitement comes in is when you know, things are new and fresh and. Uh, and exciting. So uh, this is a perfect segue to the next three topics, which relate to the kinds of things that many VISTA members are responsible for. Now, we've already looked at some life hacks to make your service easier. Now let's move on to the other three areas that relate to your VISTA assignments. First, we're going to start with community outreach. Now, this can encompass a lot, including general communication, social media, as well as like direct face-to-face -face outreach. Uh, we'll show you some campus resources and some resources beyond the campus, uh, as well as some peer resources from other VISTAs. Yeah, there are several VISTA campus resources that dig into capacity building, which is essential to community development work. One that helps you challenge your own assumptions is called Not Always What You Think. There's also an interactive tutorial on community building called The Five C's, and this looks at community, connections, control, cash, and collective action. The last resource listed here is called Strengthening Your Organization, Your Community, and Your Projects. 
but shows you how to build your pro program's sustainability by deepening your ties to the surrounding community. Use the faceted search feature on the VISTA campus to narrow down the results to get to the resources and tutorials that best meet your needs. Yeah. Uh, so also on the VISTA campus, uh, there's a number of on-demand webinar, uh, a lot of on-demand webinars on topics relating to outreach that you can watch at your convenience. We've got things like writing powerful impact statements, planning social media campaigns for your project, uh, building a professional network for service and career. Uh, and to access all these webinars on the VISTA campus, you'll go to Connect and Learn uh, on the VISTA campus, uh, and click on Webinars, scroll down, and you'll see the entire library. Uh, we also send you email notices that you know what's coming up, so be sure to register uh, for the webinars in advance and add it to your calendar so that you don't uh, you know, end up with competing, uh, competing uh, priorities. Now, in addition to the resources created by the VISTA program, there's information and advice from other VISTA members available throughout the VISTA campus. So everything, both of the things that we're mentioning today are located on the VISTA campus. Uh, first, is, first are the discussion forums. For example, you know, we already talked about this, but there's a thread uh, called Getting Information to Program Clients in the forum You and the Work. Now, this one looks at ways of reaching out to clients and potential clients of a program. Uh, you know, so as you can see, like we, we, there's topics on a, on a, on a there's, oh, sorry, forums on a wide, wide variety of topics. Uh, and the best way to stay connected through the forums is to subscribe to any forum that interests you. Um, another way to get automatically subscribed is to just like reply to a post. Uh, and we'll show you how to do that in a, in a little bit. Uh, another section of the campus contains materials created by VISTA leaders as part of the Action Learning Challenge. Uh, it's called the Team Products page. And in the area of community outreach is a guide to gaining community buy-in for your VISTA project. It highlights nine best practices for successful community participation. So go check those out. Yeah. And so I know we've talked a lot about the VISTA campus today. So looking beyond the VISTA campus, here's a fantastic resource developed by the University of Kansas. This is actually a community toolbox, which is a free online resource for those working to build healthier communities and bring about social change. It offers thousands of pages of tips and tools for taking action in communities. Whether it's community assessment, planning, evaluation, or advocacy, the Community Toolbox has something to offer among its 300 educational modules and other free tools. That's a lot. It is also currently available in English, Spanish, and Arabic. Amazing. Yeah. So it includes extensive readings on community building, toolkits, and a troubleshooting guide, as well as a database of best practices. And they even offer an Ask an Advisor feature where you can submit a question to the panel of experts or browse answers to other people's questions. Yeah. Uh, so here's some other uh, resources outside of this that might interest you. Uh, to connect with other working in the to connect with others working in the community, look for a chapter of the Young Nonprofit Professionals Network uh, or YNPN. They can be a great place to network, and some of them offer learning opportunities and other social events. Uh, the Building Movement Project has put together a handbook on community engagement. They call it the NICE Guide, which stands for Nonprofits Integrating Community Engagement, and it is really nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> and in terms of online courses, uh, here's just two examples. Allison has a free course uh, on encouraging diverse community involvement. Coursera and Coursera offers one on integrated marketing communications uh, that looks at how to communicate effectively with various audiences that could help your outreach efforts. So these are classes that are available to you. Your supervisor may also have recommendations for additional training uh, that you could take related to your VAT. All right, so let's move from community outreach to volunteer mobilization and let's see what kinds of resources might advance your service in this area. So whether it's a big part of your VAT or an occasional need for special events, you may have a need to engage volunteers in what you're doing. Fortunately, there's a lot available on this subject. The VISTA campus has an entire section on volunteer management with a range of resources. VISTA also offers a 10-week online course in volunteer mobilization that you can earn college credit recommendation from the American Council on Education. And there are also related resources in other areas of the campus, so a quick search will turn up a lot more. 
For example, there's a resource on engaging volunteers in fundraising events. Right, right, right. Uh, and as you may have guessed, uh, or you will soon learn, there is a webinar for that. Um, there's a number of on-demand webinars related to volunteer mobilization, things like high-impact volunteer recruitment, building sustainability into a volunteer program, creating group volunteer opportunities that engage and inspire. Uh, again, you can access those live uh, from the VISTA webinars page. Now, the campus also has information and advice from other VISTA members um, on volunteer mobilization. Again, there's discussion forums about these things. Uh, there's a thread called Volunteer Record Keeping that discusses the pros and cons of various databases and software packages to manage volunteer data. So if you're looking for something like that, uh, there's real advice from VISTAs um, you know, around uh, volunteer tracking. So use a search feature and find what you need. Make sure that you weigh in, you know, and add your own voice so that we can get, uh, you know, we want, we want your input. Uh, the Action Learning Team page, again, from the, the, the leaders, has a, has a guide uh, to the National Days of Service project idea. So if you're responsible for putting on a National Day of Service, uh, like a lot of this is are, I know I've had to do that before, uh, there are lots of resources there to help you um, think of ideas, uh, there's planning timelines, templates, all kinds of good stuff um, for that. All right, so again, looking outside the VISTA program, there are many places to find information on volunteer management. First, look for local volunteer managers groups in your area. There are local associations, sometimes called DOVIAs, or Directors of Volunteers and Agencies. And they, these offer regular meetings, trainings, and networking opportunities. At the national level, there is also a group called ALIVE, the Association of Leaders in Volunteer Engagement. If there's not a group in your area, or if you simply prefer online interaction, there's a wealth of online communities and discussion sites for volunteer managers. Of course, you'll find a wealth of learning resources on the internet as well. Mm -hmm. For example, Energize Inc. has the most comprehensive collection of resources on volunteer management. There are professional development resources, tools related to career advancement, links to online communities, and even a directory of local volunteer manager groups. Uh, this might be a familiar one to you, Volunteer Match. They offer more than just a powerful volunteer recruitment site. They also offer free webinars on a range of volunteer management topics, uh, as well as books and resources, and of course, a volunteer management blog. Another one that might be familiar to you, Points of Light. Points of Light offers an annual conference on volunteering and service, uh, recognition programs like the Daily Point of Light Award and the President's Volunteer Service Award, and of course, the volunteer recruitment site, All for Good. There is also the Council for Certification in Volunteer Administration, which offers a professional cre credential for those in the field of volunteer administration. Along with the textbook and pathway, for achieving it. They publish the professional ethics in volunteer management that can serve as a guide for all of those working with volunteers. Um, I want to touch on something that you just said, uh, the Council for Certification in Volunteer Administration. So throughout your year, you can actually get a certification in volunteer administration. Uh, and again, that's one of those things like as you're going through your um, your IDP, you know, thinking of like, what do I want to get out of my year? Maybe it's a certification, you know, you have this to carry on with you, uh, you know, when you're going to apply for jobs after maybe your business service, you'd say, oh, I've got a certification in volunteer administration. Uh, you know, that looks really great to employers. Uh, so yeah, what's our last one? Everyone ready? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Everyone Ready is an online volunteer management skill building program, and they feature some of the best known names in volunteer management from around the world. It is not free, but many larger organizations have subscriptions, so you might find a partner with access to this resource. And of course, there are just a few, uh, these are just a few of many resources that are available to you in the field of volunteer management. Totally, and that's another great thing. Uh, think outside of your own immediate network or your own immediate workplace. If you are finding resources or databases or 
programs or things like that that maybe your organization doesn't have access to, have access to uh, think about how you can get in on some resource sharing. And maybe you work with a community partner who does have access, or there's a larger nonprofit who maybe has access to these systems, and see if you're able to partner with them and, and you know gain access uh, to like learning systems or to things like Coursera or Linda or all these like learning sites. Um, because I know that they can be expensive, uh, but if or, or the other organizations have them, like you know, think about reaching out. Yeah, that's actually a really good segue into our fourth area that we want to explore, which is resource development. Yeah, why? Because VISTAs are capacity builders. Uh, and of course, one of the most common ways that they build capacity is by generating financial resources for their organization uh, or their communities. And beyond VISTA service, knowing how to raise money is just a great skill to have. Um, sometimes I wish I was better at raising money for myself. <laughs> Especially if you plan to work in the nonprofit sector, it's really a translatable skill there. So it's, it's, it's a very, very good skill. Now, this campus has an entire section on resource development with resources related to grant writing, fundraising, fundraising and special events. Um, the, the tutorial on researching grants uh, is a great introduction to finding funding. A lot of folks mentioned in the chat that they need more info about grant writing. It's not a skill that you just do in your like everyday life. Like most people just have a casually written grant. Like you know, like it's something that you have to work at, it's that you have to learn. Uh, so if you don't know how to do it yet, uh, don't worry, it's okay. That's not like an inherent skill. Uh, this also offers a 10-week online course in resource development. We talked about this in the beginning, uh, for which you can earn three college credit recommendation, so you can get actual college credit for taking a free course through the VISTA program. Mm -hmm. We also have an on-demand webinar uh, related to resource development, and you can watch at your own convenience. Here are some of the webinars that are available. Creating an online fundraising strategy is one. We also have writing winning proposals advice from an experienced grant reviewer, and a webinar on how to find funding opportunities. But remember, you have to register in advance and add these webinars to your calendar. Totally. So your fellow VISTAs uh, shared a lot of information and advice on fundraising and grant writing through the Campus Forum. Again, going back to those forums, there's a thread called Fundraising Ideas, where VISTAs are, just sh are sharing ideas uh, that are for fundraising events. Um, other threads include, include donor tracking software, like Salesforce, uh, and a compilation, compilation of other grant-related resources. So these are just a few examples. So use the form search again and see what's there. Yes, there, there are plenty of places beyond the campus to find information um, on resource development, of course. So those of you who see yourself in the resource development field should definitely check out the Association of Fundraising Professionals website and explore their professional development section. It includes everything from conferences and leadership training to executive institutes and certification. There's also the American Grant Writers Association, which publishes the professional standards and code of ethics for grant writers. And they also offer a free newsletter as well as a fee-based online course and workshops. There are also a ton of local networks for grant writers, so see if there's one in your area. It could also be a really good way for you to meet other people in the field. So make sure you're taking advantage of those opportunities to network. Yeah, um, so of course you'll find a uh, wealth of learning resources online, uh, like the Foundation Center, the Grants Minship Center, uh, and Grantspace. Uh, these are all, you know, places where you can find uh, information about private foundations, corporate giving programs, government grants, and other funding resources. Uh, uh, a, a lot of this, some of them are paid subscriptions, but there are plenty that are free. Uh, and you can also check out your local library to see if maybe they have a subscription to one of these services. Uh, Grantspace is a service of the Foundation Center that offers free and paid uh, training and online learning resources. Whew. Sorry. <laughs> Whew, so we have talked a lot, so we would love to turn to you again, and it's now your turn to share some professional development resources that you would recommend to your fellow VISTAs. So again, please use the chat panel to post your suggestions. So have you, you know, maybe found a free course or an online resource that was especially helpful, or maybe an affinity group or a professional organization that you think might resonate especially well with your VISTA service? Um, 
You know, sometimes people have really good TED Talks that they like to encourage oh, others yeah, to watch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, well, let us know what you think. What are some professional resources you've used for development? Uh, Sarah says United Way usually has great nonprofits. That is so true. United mm -hmm. Way is an excellent resource. Um, I personally, I like, I, I, I use lynda.com, which I really like. Uh, it, it's one that's paid, um, but uh, I've been able to find a login from <laughs> uh, and, and, and get it for free. So they have really great courses. Oh, yeah. Oh, I see one from Clarissa. I'm obsessed with LinkedIn and use LinkedIn groups to connect to other professionals in my current field and the one I intend to end up in. I am also obsessed with LinkedIn. Awesome. It's kind of crazy. Like, I really love LinkedIn. Uh, you can all <laughs> add me on LinkedIn. You can find me, Calvin Landrum, uh, at AmeriCorps Vista there. Uh, but I love LinkedIn also for the same reason. It's great for networking, great for seeing, uh, really getting specific with things uh, that uh, are directly related to, uh, to what you're doing. Yeah, let's see what else. Asana for program tracking committees and events. Nice. I'm trying to think what else are there. There's like um, maybe maybe you live in a place that has you know like a like a nonprofit network. So make, make sure that you're tapped into that. Going to those meetings. Uh, maybe I'm trying to think what else is there. So we use. Do you know of any good TED talks? Hmm. Let me think. I can't think of any off the top of my head. Can't think of TED talks, but I definitely would recommend Allison. Allison has courses in community development and fundraising, as well as some other. Uh, nonprofit related topics. Totally. Uh, so it says free camp for project management. Awesome. Webinar on taxes. David, webinar on taxes. That was mine. I hope you enjoyed hearing my voice for an hour talk about taxes. <laughs> uh, Chamber of Commerce. Sarah, that's what I was getting at, I think. It's the Chamber of Commerce. Yeah, they've got a network event. So as we're going through, please continue to post uh, your own professional development resources for everyone's edification. It's really nice to see these because we uh, sometimes pull from them and add them to presentations or we're able to then uh, give this advice to other businesses who mm -hmm. are outside of this webinar. So <clears throat> we've talked a lot about specific sites and resources and we want to give you uh, just a few more. Uh, so even with, you know, with everything available online today, brick and mortar public libraries are still valuable sites for learning. All you need is a library card. Uh, having fun is not hard and you got a library card. Yes. Uh, <laughs> many local libraries have access to online databases and grant writing resources. And librarians are usually real, well versed in the latest uh, digital trends and resources. Plus, many libraries offer free access to audiobooks, ebooks, movies, music, and so much more. Uh, not to mention, they also have you know community boards where you can go and find events happening. Uh, you might even find like recreational or social opportunities for yourself. So make sure to check them out. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I know you know here we live here in DC, and there's lots of free classes and so many networking events and fun things to do uh, that are offered to the library. So. Yeah, look at that. Definitely. And of course, there is the U.S. Census Bureau, and yes, I did say Census Bureau. They offer free webinars on a range of topics related to using, of course, census data to better understanding communities. And whether it's looking at education and income levels in various neighborhoods or understanding who's living in your country or state, these webinars offer insight and allow you to conduct your own research, research based on your individual interests. So at the local level, you can really get valuable information on community needs that are uh, available services and other details about the social service landscape from organizations like your local United Way or Volunteer Center or Chamber of Commerce. And some of these organizations also offer training and networking opportunities. So definitely be sure to find out what's available in your community. Totally. Uh, there's a way that you can connect with other VISTAs through the VISTA campus if you haven't done so already. Uh, if you fill out your project area and interest in your VISTA campus user profile, uh, you can interact with people, you know, uh, through the forums or using the VISTA map. Uh, VISTA alumni are also still, like, active in the uh, forums, so that's a good way to uh, reach out to them and get connected with them. Also connect with VISTA through social media like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all that good stuff, uh, and share your photos and stuff uh, at AmeriCorps VISTA. And we, uh, you know, might just, like, retweet you, reblog mm -hmm. you. Uh, what's it called when you regram something? I forget what it's called. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so yeah, uh, follow us on social media. Definitely. So again, back to uh, my favorite topic, 
which, uh, or as it relates to this, which is LinkedIn, as we just discovered. Um, whether you're using LinkedIn or not, now is a really good time to create and update your profile, make sure that you are, um, uh, that's just up to date. So on your LinkedIn pro profile, uh, post your Vista service under experience, uh, select AmeriCorps Vista as the company and add the AmeriCorps Vista logo. Uh, make sure to include the words AmeriCorps Vista in your job title. A lot of people are specifically searching for Vista and Peace Corps members because of their unique hireability. Uh, and make sure that you go and follow the AmeriCorps Vista page. Uh, we have um, we have webinars re that are recorded that are just about this, about translating your Vista service to uh, your resume for your career. We get plenty of like hard, tangible tips for LinkedIn. We've also got one on uh, building your professional network that has a lot of LinkedIn information. So that's a really good one to check out uh, if, you, if, you, if you have any questions. All right, also make sure that you're identifying yourself as a VISTA. And you, do, you can do this by putting the VISTA logo in your email signature and definitely on your business card. You can see a couple of examples here on the screen and make sure that your organization's website, social media platforms, brochures, and other communications mention that VISTA is powering your program. Make sure that you're wearing your VISTA polo shirt with pride. Uh, the handout for this session contains links where you can get VISTA logos, business card templates, and a free poster to use to decorate your office and represent VISTA in the field. If you want to order more Vista gear, the National Service Gear Store is listed there as well. Yeah, so as part of your Vista orientation, you developed your minute message or a short speech about your organization and your role as a Vista. Make sure that you're rehearsing this often so that you can uh, roll off the tongue with it and it comes out easily and that you can explain what you do very quickly. There are plenty of resources on the VISTA campus that will help you and teach you about how to create these messages. For sure. So uh, we have just a tiny, tiny bit of time uh, to, uh, to go through the VISTA campus. Uh, I actually hope we have time. We don't have too much time left, actually. Uh, and we want to make sure that we leave time for questions. Um, we're going to hear from an expert on the VISTA campus, Mr. Scott Weinrub, who's going to show us how to access some of the features that we mentioned in this presentation. Uh, so we're going to be like, you know, showing uh, the actual campus. Uh, uh, so yeah, Scott, I think you are free to take it away. Well, uh, thank you so much, Calvin, and thanks. Uh, to you and Khadija for uh, the great tour uh, you've already given of many of the resources on the campus. Um, in, in kind of this, this brief part of the presentation, let me focus a little bit more on some of, uh, I guess, the behind the scenes features. So some of the um, special features of the campus that uh, members will uh, have access to when, when they're logged in to, to the campus website. Um, you know, first, just uh, briefly, I, I think a, a lot of the uh, resources that you've already uh, mentioned in the presentation, uh, folks will find those in the uh, Life as a Vista, uh, the Work, uh, and the Work sections. And then I'm also going to talk about uh, some resources, some of uh, the resources you mentioned, and then I'm going to talk about some additional resources in the connect and learn area of the campus. So those are the, the three areas I'm going to focus on briefly here. Um, let me talk first about uh, the learning plan. So um, you can access the learning plan uh, from your uh, homepage. You'll see the link here. You can also access it from anywhere in the site when you're logged in by clicking this little um, drop down menu beneath your name and clicking on learning plan. And the learning plan, um, you'll have already seen it from when you uh, started service. Um, whenever you register uh, on the campus as a VISTA member, um, you're automatically assigned uh, certain training. There's one required training that you'll all be familiar with. It's the starting VISTA page that has your terms and conditions course and civil rights and responsibilities and so on. And then there are, are a few resources that we think are valuable really to all VISTAs regardless of the particular focus of their project and we automatically suggest those to you when you register for an, uh, an account. 
But the, the area of the learning plan I want to talk a little bit more about is um, the, uh, the favorite content. And think of this as a, as a convenient way to bookmark resources that you find as you're exploring the campus so you can always come back to them later without having to uh, find them again. Uh, um, I did want to mention as well, uh, before I go on to the favorite can, uh, content, there will be another feature I'll talk about in a moment around suggested learning where when you make uh, connections with others on the campus, you can suggest learning to each other. Um, in terms of how you would bookmark a resource uh, under favorite content, um, uh, so you're exploring around, maybe uh, you've heard from a colleague that there is uh, a recorded webinar that, um, uh, that they listen to on um, applying your VISTA service to your resume and career, and they recommended it, you want to check it out. So um, I'm going to type in resume, even without the... Uh, the accents, it'll, it should find it for me. Um, there's really a lot of material on the campus, but we provide a, um, a faceted search to help you filter down to what you're looking for. So in this case, because you know it's a recorded webinar, you can just go down to format and filter to the recorded webinars. And then this is actually the one right here that, uh, that my colleague told me about, translating this to service to your resume and career. So, um, it's a recorded webinar, so it goes, uh, um, as many of the webinars do, for about an hour or so. Let's say that you start watching it and um, you want to come back to it later. Uh, rather than having to find it again from scratch, what you can do is just click this little button that says, add this to my learning plan. And when you go back to your learning plan, that resource um, will appear under uh, favorite content, so you can easily access it again. I mentioned uh, briefly that you can uh, connect with folks to suggest learning to each other. You do that through Learning Connections, and um, you can find that link through your profile, which is under your uh, the little drop-down menu under your name, or uh, even, even more directly through the Connect and Learn um, uh, menu. If you're logged in, you'll see a link here to Learning Connections. And, and this is a way to search through user, uh, for users on the campus, either who share your focus area or maybe people that you've met at events, maybe even your supervisors. So in this case, I uh, want to make a learning connection with my supervisor, who happens to be named Celia Supervisor. So I just type in her name. He appears here in the search results. All I have to do then is click this little plus icon and um, and then if I were to click send here, so you would get a message saying I want to make a learning connection with her. And once she accepts, then we're connected. And at that point, uh, there's a couple of things you can do. Whenever you're on a page that has a resource I showed you that you can add it to your own learning plan, you can also suggest it to uh, with another button on each page. Uh, you can suggest that resource to any of your learning connections. There's also um, a feature that you'll find under my account where you can um, message directly through the campus um, with, uh, with other folks that you're um, connected to. Um, another way to connect with other users, if you, if you don't know names but you just want to find people in your area, you can check out the VISTA map. Um, you can kind of zoom in and uh, look uh, for people in your area, everyone from uh, VISTAs to supervisors to alumni. So let's say that you want to connect with uh, someone, you just click their pin on the map, and as before, you just click plus uh, and, and um, confirm to send them a learning connection. And once they approve that, then, then you're connected with that person. Um, see, so um, Calvin and Kavisha also uh, mentioned about the uh, VISTA forums, and that's another um, area that you'll find other connect and learn. Uh, you just click on forums, and forums are divided between members, supervisors, and leaders. If you click on VISTA forums, um, I think the VISTA Cafe is probably our most popular forum. People post there a lot. You just click, and you can either add a new topic, um, or on any existing thread, you can click, and as long as you're logged in, um, you can add a, a comment. Uh, so with that, um, I hope you found that a little bit helpful. Let me go ahead and turn things back to Calvin and Khadija. Yeah, thank you so much, Scott, for that tour of the campus. Thanks again.
it's very helpful to see uh, where the, the, the various resources are housed and to learn how to use the various interactive tools. So thanks again for that, Scott. If you're not sure what you should do uh, next on the campus, here's just a few ideas that we've come up with for you. Uh, you could visit the work section to explore the resources there or maybe add a resource to your learning plan so that you can easily find it later. Or maybe you want to connect with another VISTA using learning connections, maybe the discussion forums and even the VISTA map. Yeah, totally. Uh, so we have a, a, a little question on here. We're not going to spend too much time on this one, uh, but if you have any ideas, please, please, please put them in the chat. Uh, let's know what next steps can you take today to continue your professional development journey. Uh, I'll share. For myself personally, I think today I can go and join a new group on LinkedIn. I think it's a pretty small, manageable step. Uh, maybe try to find something focused in training or focused in, uh, you know, webinars and things like that. So that's pretty, that may be my step today that I take. Mm -hmm. Any steps you could take today? Yeah, it seems like a lot of people um, express that they didn't necessarily have regular meetings set up with their supervisors. Mm. So maybe that would be a good next step to, to ensure that you have maybe a, a weekly or maybe a bi-weekly uh, check-in with your supervisor. Totally, totally. So in addition to what we just shared and, and, and what folks are putting in the chat, Kristen says, I need to update my LinkedIn, use the resources provided to network more. <laughs> um, here's some other like immediate next steps you can take today. Uh, First, you know, you can use this webinar and the Vista Campus to identify some professional development goals and share those with your supervisor, get some feedback from, uh, you know, from them and, you know, talk about what you want to accomplish during your year. Yeah, I'd, I'd also say identify one resource, maybe an on-demand webinar or a self-paced course or even a helpful video to add to your learning plan on the Vista Campus mm -hmm, would be a good start. Uh, you can also investigate a professional organization in your current field or in a field that maybe interests you. I'm just going to a typical career path in that area while looking at online training resources uh, or other available learning opportunities. Yeah, or even identify at least one free learning resource that may help guide you in your service. And the handout for this session includes links to examples that we've mentioned, so that's a great place to look as well. Yeah. And we've given you a lot to think about, and I'm sure you have some questions for us, or maybe you do, maybe you don't. Uh, but before we start the Q&A session, we want, to, we want your feedback on this presentation. Uh, on the right side, you'll see a poll pop up that is an evaluation poll. It's just about this presentation. Uh, we really like to make sure that these are as good as they can possibly be for you all. Um, so let us know what you liked and what you didn't like uh, and how this went for you once that poll pops up. Uh, it'll be up through the remainder of the presentation. Um, so don't worry about it going away once we move on to questions, uh, but it will be there uh, you know, throughout the remainder. So please, please, please fill that out. I mean, we read, I read personally every single comment that everyone makes about these uh, so that we can make sure that they uh, you know, are as good as they can possibly be. Um, so that being said, that's going to be up for a little while. Um, now it is time for your questions. Now you can ask a question uh, using the Q&A panel on the right side of your screen. Just click the Q&A panel uh, and ask your question. Uh, but I'll also ask our operator to let us know how to ask questions by phone. Operator? Thank you. We will now begin our question and answer session. If you would like to ask a question, please press star 1. Please unmute your phone and record your name slowly and clearly when prompted. Your name is required to introduce your question. Again, that's star one. One moment, please. Thank you so much. Um, so while we're waiting to see if anyone's going to call in with any questions, we did have one in the Q&A but I thought was interesting um, uh, that, that, that we can chat about. Um, Members of, I was excited initially about my VIST position until I realized I was expected not to use my AmeriCorps VISTA hours to attend any community neighborhood meetings after 4.30. I have to use my own personal time after 4.30. Uh, I understand that I'm expected to do my work from my desk, computer, or phone, directives given, and the VISTA training conflicts with my supervisor's view of the position. What do I do if my understanding of the VAD is totally different from my supervisor's? So this is an interesting, interesting question, uh, and it's a little—it's a little tricky to parse out. But um, it sounds like—I mean, if, if community and neighborhood meetings are directly related to your Vista service project, like you should be able to count that as your service because you are—that's fully encompassing of your Vista experience and of your Vista mm -hmm. environment. Uh, you may need to be, you know, at your service sites. 
until 4.30. Like, there's a reason why you have to be there, like, in the office until 4.30. That's one thing, but, like, you should also be allowed to go to things after 4.30. And I'm sure you're, I mean, you have to be allowed to go to things, you know, community neighborhood meetings at 4.30. Like, those are things that you're allowed to do. Um, but they, they just may be in addition to your regular, like, schedule. So maybe your regular schedule is I'm in the office until 4.30, and then anything additional uh, is, like, is, is additional. Like, if this community meeting is four hours, maybe that means that you don't take four hours from your normal work day, that it is an additional four hours, you know, of, of effort that you're putting forth. Um, if your understanding of the VAT is different than your supervisors, then you should talk to them about that if you're feeling comfortable. Uh, I would go to them and say, hey, um, you know, uh, this is where I'm coming from on this. This is my understanding of what I'm supposed to be doing. This is what I, you know, signed up to do. This is what um, maybe was told to me. If you have anything like that, if you have documentation, say, hey, this is what I'm supposed to be being told. This is what, this, this is my interpretation of my VISTA project. What is your interpretation, and how do we get these on the same level? Like, like we need to make sure that we have the same understanding, exactly what is required, what is expected, and where we need to take this. Um, if that's a conversation that you are not comfortable having, you can email your state office and let them know that and say, hey, uh, this is the issue that I'm having. I feel as though my actual project is not lining up with the things that I'm actually being asked to do. Would you mind mediating a conversation between myself and my supervisor so that we can make sure that we're on the same level? Your state office would love to do that for you. They can do that. Um, an easy way to get in touch with them is it's going to be your state abbreviation at cns.gov. So, example, if you're in Texas, it's going to be tx at cns.gov. If you're in Alabama, it's al at cns.gov. Excellent, easy way to get in touch with your supervisor. Uh, best of luck on that situation. Reach out to them and they will help you out. Uh, let's see, Pamela Jackson Walter says, wonder if I can check out now. Enjoy this webinar, one suggestion. Move the slide slower. Thank you for that suggestion. And Pamela, if you have no questions or you don't want to stick around, please feel free uh, to, to disconnect. Uh, Cameron, is there a recording of the slides and chat responses that's available for those who join by phone? There are, there is a recording of the slides, but there's not a recording of the chat responses, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> they, we, they're, they're, we just don't have a way to capture those and post those, but you can uh, view a recording of this webinar in about a week. It's going to be posted on the Vista campus. So let's see, do we have... What do we have in the chat? Uh, Clarissa, for all of you looking to join and improve your LinkedIn, you're more than welcome to connect with me. You can find me as Clarissa Todd, and I'm listed as Vista. Yeah, thanks, Clarissa, for that. Um, I, I know, like one, you know, one uh, very quick and easy improvement that you can make is to change your URL on your LinkedIn profile. Make it your name so that you are LinkedIn dot com slash Calvin dot Landrum. Like that is mine. It's very easy to put on my resume. It's easy to put on a business card. It's like, you know, it's easy. It's better than saying like LinkedIn dot com slash F five C W uppercase L P P Khadija. Like that's you know, it's kind of ugly and it's something that you have complete control over. Super easy, uh, makes you look very polished uh, in the end. That's you know one quick thing you can do. Yeah. Let's see, do we have any questions over the phone? At this time, we have no questions on the phone line, but as a reminder, please press star one. All right. So, uh, we'll wait I mean, maybe another couple seconds, see if there's any more questions. I'm not really seeing any. Um, again, if you have questions, just type them in the chat, type them in the Q&A if you'd like to, um, um, and we'll, we'll answer whatever you've got. If there are no questions, then uh, we can uh, go forward. We did just have a question pop up on the audio portion. Oh, wonderful. One, mom one moment. <laughs> Our first question comes from David. Your line is open. Hey, David. Yes, hi. Um, my question is on the community tool and uh, my question is really up on the toolkits and the troubleshooting guide. Can you elaborate more on the toolkits and the troubleshooting guide? There was like several points you went over on the community tool, and I wanted to focus more on the learning skills of the toolkits and the troubleshooting guide. On the troubleshooting guide. Now, I'm trying to think. If I'm going back, I'm wondering 
which one this is in reference to. I think we shared quite a few. Was this on the Vista campus or no? Yes, this was concerning um, acting, learning, um, team products, but it said community tool. Oh, the action learning challenge, like the action right. learning tool. Okay, yeah. Um, so those are developed by Vista leaders, uh, and they are on the, they're available to you on the Vista campus. Uh, we can post a link to those uh, in the in the chat. Uh, but essentially, what, so there's a few of them, and I think one of them uh, is about uh, doing like a data service. There's like a full toolkit there. So there's things in that toolkit about you know there's like templates, uh, you know for Maybe even making a flyer, what to include, how to recruit volunteers, how to advertise your day of service. All that stuff is all in, the, is, is all in there. Uh, there are other ones. I'm sorry, I'm trying to think like um, what the so, other ones so, are. Hi, hi, Calvin. Uh, this is Scott. I, I, I wonder if the caller might be referring to the community toolbox, which is that University yes. of yes. Uh, Kansas website. Yes. Uh, that if, if that's the one, I'm going to go ahead and uh, post the link to that in the chat for everyone. And then I'm also happy I'll, I'll go and uh, retrieve the link for the Action Learning Challenge page from the campus as well, because that you. is another great resource. Thank you. I was referring to that. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Okay, yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, so, right. so, so you'll see that in the chat. All right, thanks, David. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, let's see, Kristen says, I'm experiencing downtime in my service right now. I've exhausted many irrelevant VISTA webinars, work around the office. Are there other ways I can be productive in my downtime? Uh, Kristen, this is an excellent question. I think you have four-year supervisor. If you haven't already, talk to them and say, hey, I, uh, well, say, hey, you know, I'm feeling like I don't have much to do right now. Are there any other projects I can be working on? Uh, I don't know how big your office is, if, there, if there's opportunities for you to, uh, work on, you know, things that maybe aren't necessarily directly in your wheelhouse. So where you can just gain experience, like maybe there's a marketing team or maybe there's, you know, a different different teams where you can collaborate with. Uh, those are great uh, ways to do that. Um, Definitely. I'm thinking uh, immediately about shadowing other folks in other departments. I think this was something that I found very useful in my VISTA service was being able to shadow up people in other departments and finding ways that their work intersected with the, the assignments that were in my FAD. Totally. And I think, too, um, you know, there are – most of the folks on this webinar, I think, are still in the very early stages of their service, so surely you're not, like, done with your FAD yet. Yeah. Um, so I would really, like – I mean, I would take a hard look at your FAD and say, what can I start working on now? How can I put pieces in place that are going to make my life easier down – you know, down the road. Uh, what can I start getting set up? Who can I call, you know, to put the pieces into place? Where can I, uh, where I need to go to make connections to make volunteer recruitment easier? Uh, because I will have an established network of people. Like, really just like being proactive about the things in your VAD. Um, I'd be really curious to like, to see what your VAD was and see what projects you should be working on or you're going to be accomplishing throughout your year to see like, what can you start working on now in this lull, like while you have this like precious free time, some people would like love to have like a moment of downtime. So really like maximize it uh, and try to think of you know what can I be preparing you know going forward. I do see another <laughs> question here. It says I intend to go to law school and haven't found any resources on the Vista campus related to the legal field. My state office has just referred me back to the Vista campus. Is there anything out there that AmeriCorps provides to help my legal professional development? Um, so that's hard. Like I don't know if you've taken uh, what's the log is the uh, bar exam or if you're looking to like prep for that stuff. There's nothing specifically on the Vista campus I think in in regards to like law school, but we do have some uh, resources about graduate school and sort of what that looks like. How to use your education award for graduate school. Um, how to use your education award for those uh, for like. Uh, for classes to help you prepare for this test and prepare for GREs and all that stuff. Uh, um, so legal, prof like, no, actually, I mean, I don't, I, I can't think of anything specifically dealing with like legal professional development, but it's a huge field. So another thing that exists like other places other than the Vesta campus, it just may not be the best resources for like what you're looking for. Um, but, you know, uh, that's like in your search. There's a lot of things out there. I'd say, like, you know, legal 
legal people like meetups. There's like lawyer meetups. There are uh, lawyer, like, you know, um, 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 mentoring and shadowing programs. Get with your local college. If there's a local college or community college and talk to their legal program and say, hey, do you have anything here? What resources do you have? Do you mind if I come in and just hang out for like a day? and see what these classes are like uh, and see if this is actually what I want to do. Uh, they can connect you probably with scholarship resources, with test prep, uh, with someone to talk to, like if you just want to know about the profession and know like what, what is actually in, uh, involved in that. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure, I don't think we have anything specifically on um, law school. But. And I think, uh, yeah. are there any more in there? My name's going to mess up. Yeah. Check the chat. Don't be too shy to post your questions. Yep. And that's seeing the none. Yep. All right, well, seeing no more questions, uh, we're going to go ahead and wrap this thing up. Yes, thank you so much for participating today. You've definitely shared a ton of great resources and ideas for your colleagues to use, and certainly some for us to consider adding sure. as well. I'd also like to thank our production team, Andy and Scott of Education Northwest, and of course my fellow presenter, Calvin Landrum. Yeah, thank you, Khadija. Uh, we also have other webinars for VISTA members uh, coming up. Uh, please join us next Thursday, or not, I should say Thursday. Join us next Thursday, May 10th, uh, at 2 p.m. Eastern. I'll be hosting a really, really fun webinar that like, you really do want to go to. About getting outdoors with your education award, and it's all about uh, how to use your education award to go on like you know adventure trips, like how to go you know hiking in the Grand Canyon, go to the Himalayas, go like sailing in Maine. How to take these trips? We're going to have representatives from the Knowles Program, the National Outdoor Leadership School, and from Outward Bound. Again, they're going to come talk about the specific benefits that they offer to AmeriCorps members, and really how you can use your education award once you earn it to take some of their courses. Uh, it's going to be really awesome, so please join us for that. Uh, you can find the registration link on the webinars page of the VISTA campus, uh, and then watch your inbox you know, for announcements of other upcoming learning opportunities. And uh, we hope to see you again. Thank you all so much. Thanks, Kadisha. Thank you. Have a great day.